Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today, we'll take a quick look at RC filters by way of a series of illustrated example problems. This lecture operates under the presumption that the viewer has a basic understanding of RC filters and can calculate gain expressed in the units of decibels as illustrated in the RC filters lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only didn't recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Mastery of RC filters necessitates active participation on your part. As such, I'm asking you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers don't match those illustrated, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Consider the following series circuit, consisting of a 200 ohm resistor and a 0.4 microfarad capacitor. The source, Vn, has an effective value of 30 volts and an excitation frequency that can be varied from 1 to 20 kilohertz. Is this a high pass or a low pass filter? Note V out, the property of interest, is being read across the resistor. If you're tracking, you should realize that this is a high pass filter. Given the capacitor's impedance is frequency dependent, we should observe a large voltage drop across the capacitor at low frequencies, leaving very little left over for the resistor. Conversely, we should observe a small voltage drop across the capacitor at high frequency, leaving more left over for the resistor. In summary, at low frequencies, V out will be low, and at high frequencies, V out will be high. This fits the description of a high pass filter quite nicely. Let's see if this is the case. Second question, what's the critical frequency for this circuit? By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The critical frequency represents an occasion in which the magnitude of ZR equals the magnitude of ZC. F of C, the critical frequency, equals 1 over 2 pi RC. Substituting in our given values, we find FC to be equal to approximately 1989.4 Hz, super close to 2 kHz. Next, see if you can determine the output voltage at the critical frequency. Once you've got this property, normalize the output and see if you can express a gain figure in units of decibels. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. At the critical frequency, the complex impedance of the capacitor will be 200 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. The complex impedance of the 200 ohm resistor is 200 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. As we anticipated, the capacitor and resistor do indeed present impedances of equal magnitude at the critical frequency. Let's now examine output voltage for this high pass filter circuit at the critical frequency. Perhaps the easiest method of solving for voltage across the resistor is through the use of the AC voltage divider rule. The AC voltage divider rule set up to solve for V out demonstrates that V out will be 21.2 volts at an angle of 45 degrees. You'll know output voltage at the critical frequency is source voltage divided by square root 2 and is phase shifted from it by 45 degrees. This is an identifiable feature of filter circuits at the critical frequency. If we wish to normalize this output, we would have to divide output voltage magnitude by input voltage magnitude. Doing so leaves us with a dimensionless constant 0.707 or 1 over square root 2, meaning output voltage is roughly 70.7% of input at the critical frequency. Finally, gain in units of decibels equals 20 log of voltage output divided by voltage input. Substituting in our given values, we find this to be a gain of roughly negative 3 decibels. You recall a gain of negative 3 decibels is synonymous for a condition of half power. This makes perfect sense. At the critical frequency, one would expect this circuit to experience half power. Moving on, let's now see if you can determine these same properties at 500 Hz, roughly a quarter of the critical frequency, and at 8 kHz, roughly four times the critical frequency. You should observe some very predictable behavior illustrative of a high pass filter operation at regions below and above the critical frequency. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. At the reduced excitation frequency of 500 Hz, the complex impedance of the capacitor will be roughly 795.8 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Capacitive impedance goes up. The complex impedance of the 200 ohm resistor remains 200 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Given this change in impedance, we should expect more voltage to be dropped across the higher impedance capacitor and less across the lower impedance resistor. This makes perfect sense for a high pass filter operating at a frequency lower than the critical frequency. The AC voltage divider rule demonstrates that V out will be roughly 7.3 volts at an angle of 75.9 degrees. You know, output voltage at 500 Hz is less than that experienced at the critical frequency. This is an identifiable feature of high pass filter circuits. If we wish to normalize this output, we'd have to divide output voltage magnitude by input voltage magnitude. Doing so leaves us with a dimensionless constant 0.244, 
meaning output voltage is roughly 24.4% of input. Finally, gain in units of decibels equals 20 log of V out over V in. Substituting our given values, we find this to be a gain of roughly negative 12.3 decibels, meaning this circuit is experiencing less than half power. This makes perfect sense. At frequencies below the critical frequency, one would expect the circuit to experience less than half power. Let's do the same thing for the increased excitation frequency of 8 kHz. At the increased excitation frequency of 8 kHz, the complex impedance of the capacitor will be roughly 49.7 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Capacitive impedance went down. The complex impedance of the 200 ohm resistor remains 200 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Given this change in impedance values, we should expect less voltage to be dropped across the lower impedance capacitor and more across the higher impedance resistor. This makes perfect sense for a high pass filter operating at a frequency higher than the critical frequency. The AC voltage divider rule demonstrates that V out will be approximately 29.1 volts at an angle of 14 degrees. You note the output voltage at 8 kilohertz is more than that experienced at the critical frequency. This is an identifiable feature of high pass filter circuits. If we wish to normalize this output, we would divide output voltage magnitude by input voltage magnitude. Doing so leaves us with a dimensionless constant of 0.970, meaning output voltage is roughly 97% of input. Finally, gain in units of decibels equals 20 log of V out over V in. Substituting our given values, we find this to be a gain of roughly negative 0.3 decibels. This makes perfect sense. At frequencies above the critical frequency, one would expect this high pass filter circuit to experience more than half power. That's about it. Really the only thing more I could ask you would be to plot these results for a range of frequencies, but ain't nobody got time for that. Computer, do a frequency sweep and plot output voltage in the semi-log plot. Doing so yields a plot like this. You'll note output voltage is plotted linear on the vertical Y scale and frequency is plotted logarithmically, where each equal interval represents a power of 10. At low frequencies, output voltage is low and at high frequencies, output voltage is high. There's an identifiable knee or corner at the critical frequency, after which output kind of levels off. A plot of normalized output looks almost indistinguishable. Only the vertical axis now represents the dimensionless constant of V out over V in. Finally, a plot of gain in units of decibels looks a little snappier, in that the upward slope seems to be almost linear, and the knee or corner at the critical frequency is a little sharper. In fact, this plot is so sharp, we can do a little straight line approximation. From one-tenth the critical frequency to the critical frequency, we can assume a slope of negative 20 decibels to zero decibels, after which at the critical frequency to 10 times and beyond the critical frequency, the approximation assumes a zero decibel flatline. We know this isn't true, however it's a great approximation tool, especially at frequencies less than one-tenth the critical frequency and greater than 10 times the critical frequency, i.e. regions in which the difference between the actual gain and the linear approximations aren't so distant. You note at frequencies much, much lower than one-tenth the critical frequency, this high-pass filter exhibits extremely low gain. For example, consider the roughly negative 40 decibel gain exhibited at one one-hundredth the critical frequency at roughly 20 hertz, and the roughly negative 60 decibel gain exhibited at one one-thousandth the critical frequency at roughly 2 hertz. In fact, for frequencies beyond one-tenth the critical frequency, i.e. less than about 200 hertz for this particular example, there's a shortcut means of calculating gain given the small difference between the straight line approximation and the actual response. The shortcut method doesn't necessitate circuit analysis, but rather a simple formula which states gain in units of decibels will be equal to positive 20 times the common log of the frequency of interest over the critical frequency. Note we're using a positive sign in front of the 20 because we're dealing with a positive or rising slope of a high pass filter. For example, let's say we wish to know the gain at 50 Hz. This is obviously much, much lower than the critical frequency and deep inside the stop band for this high pass filter, so we're totally safe to use the shortcut formula. Substituting in our given values of 50 Hz and 1989.4 Hz yields a gain of roughly negative 32 decibels, which kind of confirms what we're seeing on this graph. If we're ever asked to quickly approximate this filter's gain at regions beyond 10 times the critical frequency, we're safe to assume it has a zero decibel gain. All right, that wasn't too hard, was it? Let's try a low-pass filter illustrated example, only this time at a rapid-fire pace, including an interesting two-part challenge. Challenge 1. Given the following series circuit consisting of VN, a 12-volt source that can be varied up to 5 kHz and a 400-ohm resistor, determine the capacitance level necessary for a 500 Hz critical frequency. I say again, determine the capacitance level for a 500 Hz critical frequency. 
This will take a degree of algebraic manipulation. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The critical frequency represents an occasion in which the magnitude of ZR equals the magnitude of ZC. In this occasion, we know the resistance and the critical frequency and are being asked to solve for the capacitance. Ultimately, we're being asked to solve for the capacitance and will yield a 400 ohm impedance at 500 Hz. Algebraic manipulation of the capacitive impedance formula suggests a 795.8 nanofarad or roughly 0.8 microfarad capacitor should do the trick. Moving on. Challenge 2. See if you can determine the output voltage and gain in units of decibels at the critical frequency. Easy, right? Just perform AC circuit analysis and run through a bunch of formulas to get the desired results. Yes, but what's the challenge in that? Here's the challenge. You are not allowed to calculate complex impedance, nor are you allowed to use Ohm's law or the AC voltage divider rule. In fact, the only tool you are authorized to use is your understanding of filter circuits at the critical frequency. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Operating at the critical frequency implies that the output voltage will be input voltage divided by square root 2 and phase shifted by 45 degrees. We should therefore expect output voltage, a voltage across the capacitor to be roughly 8.5 volts, at an angle of negative 45 degrees. Operating at the critical frequency represents a condition of half power. Half power means a gain of negative 3 decibels. No heavy calculations required. These are all features of a filter being operated at the critical frequency. Next, see if you can answer these simple questions. What will output voltage do if we drop excitation frequency to 100 Hz, one-fifth the critical frequency? Similarly, what will output do if we raise excitation frequency to 2.5 kHz, five times the critical frequency? Again, what will output voltage do for these scenarios? Will it go up or will it go down? Don't worry about calculating an exact answer just yet. Use the understanding of a low-pass filter circuit operating at conditions below and above the critical frequency. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. This is a low-pass filter. At operating conditions below the critical frequency, we should observe higher output voltage. At 100 Hz, we should therefore expect output voltage to be more than 8.5 volts, but less than 12 volts. Similarly, at operating conditions above the critical frequency, we should observe lower output voltage. At 2.5 kHz, we should therefore expect output voltage to be less than 8.5 volts, but more than 0 volts. I'll save you the time and do the painstaking calculations myself. At 100 Hz, we would expect output voltage to be roughly 11.8 volts at an angle of negative 11.3 degrees and exhibit a gain of negative 0.2 decibels. At 2.5 kHz, we should expect voltage to be 2.4 volts at an angle of negative 78.7 degrees and exhibit a gain of roughly negative 14.1 decibels. Granted, I just threw these numbers up on the board here, but it took me a couple minutes to perform these calculations. Finally, if we were asked to plot gain in units of decibels as a function of frequency on a semi-log plot, it looks something like this. This plot illustrates classic low-pass filter behavior, and we can incorporate some linear approximations to identify some important features. At frequencies below the critical frequency, we're almost at a zero decibel flatline. At the critical frequency, there's a noticeable knee or corner, after which the downward slope almost becomes linear, reaching negative 20 decibels at 10 times the critical frequency, or 5 kHz. Can we use the shortcut method to directly calculate gain at 2.5 kHz without having to perform circuit analysis? Not really, since 2.5 kHz is only 5 times the critical frequency, and very serious among you might frown upon this method. However, it wouldn't hurt to compare the results. For frequencies beyond 10 times the critical frequency, there's a shortcut means of calculating gain given the small difference between the straight line approximation and the actual response of a low pass filter. The shortcut method doesn't necessitate circuit analysis, but rather a simple formula which states gain in units of decibels will be equal to negative 20 times the common log of the frequency of interest over the critical frequency. Note we're using a negative sign in front of the 20 because we're dealing with a negative or falling slope of a low pass filter. Substituting our given values of 2.5 kHz and 500 Hz yields a gain of roughly negative 14 decibels, which is super close to what we determined using the circuit analysis method, albeit with significantly less effort. Again, you're really only supposed to use the shortcut method when the frequency of interest is extremely distant from the critical frequency, i.e. less than one-tenth in the case of a high pass and more than 10 times in the case of a low pass, but as I just demonstrated, it's pretty accurate, even this close. I guess what I'm trying to say 
is that the closer you get to the knee or the corner region, i.e. the closer you get to critical frequency, is when the linear approximations break down and you've got to resort to more intensive circuit analysis if you expect accurate results. Depending upon the application, you may or may not need to resort to more or less rigorous analysis techniques. All right, that's about it. That wasn't too hard, was it? Trust me, I can make it a lot harder, but that's all you need to know for now. When you get right down to it, resonant circuits and RC filter circuits are just AC circuit analysis with a twist. That twist being, frequency is no longer a fixed quantity, but rather a variable that influences the electrical properties of the circuit under inspection. At its core is your understanding of the simple concepts of complex impedance in Ohm's law. For reactive components like capacitors, impedance changes as a function of frequency. As frequency decreases, capacitive impedance increases. As frequency increases, capacitive impedance drops. For an RC filter circuit, low pass or high pass, as capacitive impedance increases, voltage across the capacitor rises and voltage across the resistor drops. Conversely, as capacitive impedance decreases, voltage across the capacitor drops and voltage across the resistor rises. The only difference between a high pass filter circuit and a low pass filter circuit it was where the output voltage is red. Low pass filters take the voltage across the capacitor. At low frequencies, output voltage is high, and at high frequencies, output voltage is low. Conversely, high pass filters take the voltage across the resistor. At low frequencies, output voltage is low, and at high frequencies, output voltage is high. Trust me, when viewed using the simple concepts of complex impedance in Ohm's law, RC filters make much much more sense. Yes, there's some weird math involved, especially when plotting properties on semi-log scales and calculating gain in decibels, but these techniques will get easier with more practice. You don't have to love logarithms and decibels, but you do have to coexist with them. In conclusion, this lecture examines simple passive high and low pass RC filters by way of a series of illustrated example problems. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.